Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia. Today I'm talking to Deborah Maduriki, who is in Zimbabwe. Hi Deborah, how are you? Hello, hello, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks so much for having a chat with me today. Now, um, it's my understanding that you help to run a clubfoot clinic there where you are, and we're going to talk all, of, all about that in a, minute, in a minute. But maybe first you could just introduce yourself to everybody, tell us a little bit about who you are and kind of what you get up to and, and how you sort of came to be involved in clubfoot. Okay. Um, so my name is Deborah Mudariki. I'm a physiotherapist and I work with the Zimbabwe Sustainable Clubfoot Program. Um, this is the National Clubfoot Coordinating Program in Zimbabwe. And we work in collaboration with Ministry of Health uh, to train, set up and run clubfoot clinics um, all across the country. We have 13 clinics at the moment and my job basically after we've done the training after we've given them the basic starting kits is to go around all those 13 clinics and mentor and supervise and give technical support to the clinic staff who are on the ground running these clinics on a weekly basis yeah. <laughs> That sounds amazing. I actually didn't realise that you were involved in a national programme. I thought you were involved in just one clinic. So um, so that's quite a wide reach, isn't it? Um, how, it is. how did the National Clubfoot programme come about in Zimbabwe? Do you know? So we... The Zimbabwe Sustainable Clubfoot programme came into existence around about 2009-2010. It was a brainchild of our current director and founder of this um, program, and his name is Ryan Bathurst. So he basically started with um, going around um, with two clinics to start with in Harare, where he introduced the concept, got the buy-in from the Ministry of Health um, officials, and they allowed him to establish the clinics. Um, I was working at one of the clinics in 2011 and that's when the Ponsetti method was introduced to me and Ryan came with a team uh, including Prof Lavi um, and a whole lot of other guys from the UK who came and helped to get the pilot project or the pilot clinic started. That's at a hospital called Paridenyadwa. So after working with the program um, I then, I was still a Minister of Health uh, staff member then, a physiotherapist and a ministry then. And two years later, I became a full team member of the Zimbabwe Sustainable Clubfoot Program because they needed someone to go around the clinics, someone who had experience working with uh, government hospitals, and someone who also had experience with the technique. So June 2013, that's when I joined the uh, National Clubfoot Program. So it sounds like it's quite a, maybe a physiotherapy led program, is that, would that be correct? Yes, yes. So you'll find um, in Zimbabwe it's mostly physiotherapy slash rehabilitation department lead because we're physiotherapists, we've got occupational therapists and what we call rehabilitation technicians working in the um, club foot clinics. But yeah, you're quite right, it's mostly physiotherapists. Unlike other places in the world, where it's surgeons. We don't have as much surgeons, so it's the physiotherapists. Okay, that's good. And um, with, when you talk about the clinics, where are the clinics based? Are they mainly based in hospitals or can they be in sort of community outreach centers as well? So our clinics, um, mostly, all of them actually are based in hospitals. Central hospitals, what we call central hospitals, the main referral hospitals and provincial hospitals. So these are all referral centers uh, that are adequately staffed with um, the doctors to perform the genotomies and the physiotherapy or rehabilitation department staff who do the casting, the manipulation and the casting. And how many how many um, individuals with club foot are you seeing sort of in a maybe month or year or what's your kind of caseload like? 
So at the moment, as of June 2017, we have over 1,500 children that have been seen collectively at our 10 um, clinics, at our 13 clinics, sorry. Um, we have about 500 new cases that we expect or that we find every year in Zimbabwe. So Zimbabwe has a population of about 13 million and our new cases are around 500 every year and they are spread across the country. Yeah. And um, so what's the kind of normal experience or the kind of usual experience of an individual who attends one of your clinics? So the normal experience would be once a week um, the individual has to attend the clinic depending on what stage of the treatment they are. Is it casting or is it maintenance where they are now in the braces? Um, so they present to one of our clinics. Once every week our clinics are on set days. It could be a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday and it happens throughout the year. You know your club for the clinic is on a specific day. So they come through to the clinic um, and they are met by our what we call Ponseti guides. These are like peer counselors who talk to the parents and just find out what challenges they've been going through and we just deal with compliance issues. And then from the peer counselors, they go into the clinical staff. It could be a physiotherapist, occupational therapist, or um, a rehabilitation technician, depending on where the clinic is. And they are assist before the cast is removed, if they are in the casting stage just to see what the cast is like and where to reinforce later on. And they go to a station where they remove the casts if they're in the casting phase. If they're in the bracing phase, they go straight to a bracing station. Um, both this, um, if they're in casting or in bracing, they then go to the clinicians for assessment and their scores, their Pirani scores are um, checked and they go into the treatment, depending on what it is for that week. And if they're getting a cast, they get their cast applied. If they're getting braces, they get their braces checked or sizes changed if they are now small. And they're given a new appointment date and they go home and we see them the next time. It sounds very, it does sound very well organised and um, like it functions very well. Um, how do you, so you have 13 clinics all around the country and Zimbabwe is not a small country. So how do you kind of standardise that, uh, the sort of um, management of individuals of Clubfoot or the clinic experience across all of your clinics? Is there any particular way that you can manage to do that? So um, I think in Zimbabwe we've been fortunate in that the uh, main driving force behind Ponseti management is one organization. So it's the Zimbabwe Sustainable Club for Program. And they have a memorandum of understanding with the Minister of Health. So what happens is right at the beginning, starting with the training, the basic training and the advanced training, it's all done by the Zimbabwe Sustainable Club for Program which is myself and Ryan and our team. And so we try and make sure that everyone has got the same basic information, basic skills right from the beginning. We then send them back to their clinics from where they'll be operating. And if they are new, if it's a new clinic we've just set up, there's intensive supervision and follow-up just to check on those uh, technical issues that arise and um, um, there's also support in terms of materials, so we make sure all our clinics have got plaster of Paris and they've got braces readily available and free of charge for um, our patients. And then we also have, across all clinics, we have the peer counsellors or the Ponseti guides, just to make sure that they give peer support and parent support to all parents in all those 13 clinics. So I would say the fundamental is making sure that you've got high quality training right at the beginning and they get those uh, concepts right from the start and follow up and mentorship because it's a technical hands-on skill and sometimes what you learn at the training and what you encounter when you go back to your center you need someone to be saying okay do this this way let's try this let's um 
attack this challenge this way and that's how we basically try and run our clinics yeah so it's like a cent so they do a centralized training program that you provide first of all yes so it could be centralized in that it's at um one place where everyone comes or it's centralized in that if we're setting up a clinic in a smaller town people around that town go to that hospital and we set up from the and then they go back to their individual smaller um, clinics or smaller departments, but they all come together for the trainings. Yeah, and um, okay, so it sounds it sounds great how you actually set them up, and I really like the idea of the peer to peer support and the mentoring system. I mean, that sounds great from a perspective of um, for the patients and for the clinicians. Um, I think that's really important, especially when especially when you're doing like a national service that's um, you're trying to. Uh, that, that's run centrally across a whole whole nation. I think that sounds that's really nice. Um, now I'm imagining that you've you've faced quite a lot of challenges in running, setting up and running these clinics. Can you share some of those challenges with us? Um, there are quite a number of challenges. Um, I think at the moment our major problem is uh, Zimbabwe is going through some financial uh, issues, and. Uh, parents need to get to the clinic for them to access treatment. So issues like transport money for them to get to the clinic every week, sometimes that's a challenge. When they overcome that, uh, you find they get to the clinics and um, sometimes the, there's high staff turnover because people are looking for greener pastures and you may find that the staff has changed or there's someone who's new and they're learning and all that. Um, so that's another challenge. We also have a challenge um, where, so a key word in the name of the organization is sustainable. So sustainability is, is a challenge because we're saying ideally we would want a lot more ownership from the local ministry where they are funding, where they make sure they're supplying the materials, where they make sure that everything runs smoothly. Um, so at the moment, that's also a challenge. We're still actually trying to define what does sustainability mean in an economy that's struggling. But yeah, uh, that's one of the issues that we face to make sure that everything is supplied. Because if you have free materials, then it makes the burden lighter for the parents. But if they have to pay for anything, then that's a challenge. So fortunately at the moment, because of support from partners, we are providing this treatment free of charge. Um, another challenge that does arise sometimes is um, when you come across older children, because we still have some neglected club fit, who then need more than just your basic ponseti uh, training. You find they may need surgical intervention. So we're still just trying to come up with a way of streamlining the processes so that they don't get lost in between referrals and in between just bogged down by the processes because it can become a bit overwhelming. So I'd say those are the challenges that we're facing at the moment. Yeah, and I imagine some of those challenges are fairly unique to your situation, and some of the some are challenges that everyone would uh, probably face wherever yes. they are in the world. Um, um, so it's good to share those and good to hear about those, especially for people who are setting up clinics to know that there are, everyone faces challenges, um, um, and that's a part of it, I suppose. What kind of advice for people that are setting up clubfoot clinics? What advice would you share with them to help them on their way? So I would say um, they need to make sure that their training right from the beginning is high quality training. If there is no one who's as experienced as they would want, it's good to bring in external supporting um, uh, individuals so that they get the training right. Then after that, um, it would be good for them to have a supervision strategy in place because you need a lot of hands on and a lot of direct supervision. It's not just setting up a clinic and packing your bags and leaving and saying, okay, we've started a clinic, so now we're good to go. You actually need a lot of mentoring um, and um, technical support. And then uh, after that, you'd need to ensure that the clinics that you're setting up understand that you are empowering them to provide a better service. They have to own the program. It can't be Deborah's program, it can't be ZSCP's program. They have to own the clinic. 
are found with clinics that own everything. They run smoothly. Whereas if they open a clinic and they believe whoever's trained them is the owner of the clinic, that ownership, you lose, you lose the momentum and you lose the, um, you lose the quality of work that you'd want to see in a clinic. So clinic ownership, definitely, that's a, a, a big thing. And then I think also understanding the environment in which you're setting up a, a clinic. Are you setting up a clinic in private practice? Or are setting up a national program or a national clinic where um, these are people with a public health approach in mind in setting up these clinics? So if you're setting up wherever you're setting up, you need to understand the dynamics of where you're setting up. Do you need ministry approval? Do you need support from certain key stakeholders so that at least it's a coherent effort and you get as much support and as much input from all the relevant stakeholders right from the beginning. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, Deborah. I think your your experience of running or setting up these clinics and running running them or managing them, being a part of the program in Zimbabwe, just absolutely shines through. And, and I can um, tell that you've got quite a lot of experience in this. And so thank you so much for sharing all that with um, everyone else because I think it's really valuable for people who are just sort of starting out or thinking about starting out that it's quite possible and there are challenges and there are ways to overcome them. Um, talking to you today has been been great. Um, thank you for sharing all your experiences. Is there okay, anything that we haven't covered that you think um, that you'd like to share with everyone or that you think we um, have I've missed out? Um, I don't think we've missed out anything. I think I'd just like to uh, part uh, on an encouragement tip uh, for those who are thinking of starting clinics. It can be done. And where there's a will, there's a way. Where there's a passion, it's amazing the smiles that we can put collectively as physios, as medical staff, on children and parents' faces. We can make a difference and it begins with you wherever you are in your little corner, but you can make a difference and I wish you all the best. Oh, thank you so much, Deborah. Now, Deborah, but just before we go, where can we find out more about um, your uh, service in Zimbabwe? Okay. You can email our national um, uh, uh, program manager. That's it, zscpteam at gmail.com. Oh, that's excellent. Thank you so much for sharing um, that email. I, I have a feeling, I hope that you're not inundated with emails now, but maybe that will be a really, really useful um, place for some people who are thinking about setting up a clinic to start. Or even if there are people in Zimbabwe who'd like to get involved with your organisation um, and help you out and work with you. So thank you so much for talking to us today. It's been great to share your knowledge um, and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you very much, Rachel. Thank you.